person not all of it saying, thank you, Aaron. We want to keep you. We're working on it. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> but we are thankful that we are a kind of connectional church, and you can help them out. I'm not sure they really, but it is good to have you. So welcome back. We are here to lift up the name of the Lord this morning, uh, to lift up the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so let's pray and thank him for this opportunity to be together. Gracious Heavenly Father, I, I am teasing about the other churches. I am thankful that we are in connection with other brothers and sisters in our community and that we can help each other out like that. What a blessing. Lord, I thank you for each person that is here this morning. It's not an accident that you brought them here. You have drawn them here this morning. And, and Lord, we thank you for those that may be uh, watching online and we thank you for that technology. And pray that that technology would stay strong and stay good. Speak to our hearts and minds this morning, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to not just kind of go through the Sunday morning routine or the Sunday morning motions. Draw us closer to you than when we walked in this building. Um, let us be in awe and reverence and amazement about how worthy you are and what you've done for us. We need you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We lift up this time of worship. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Again, this week our call to worship comes from uh, Revelation chapter 5. Rachel's going to lead us in it, but I invite you to stand. It will be on the screen. And let's be called to worship by God's word. And when he had ended the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God. From every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and grace to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads, and 
and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord as we get ready to sing praises. <laughs>
sang this one last week, but we sing it again this week as it goes so well with the call to worship and the scriptures we're looking at today, Revelation uh, chapter 4 and chapter 5. Worthy is the Lord. Join me in the corporate confession of faith. There is only one living and true God who is infinite in being and perfections, a completely pure spirit, invisible, without body, parts, or emotions, unchangeable, immensely vast, eternal, limitless, almighty, completely wise. Completely holy, completely free, and completely absolute. He works everything according to the purpose of his own 
unchangeable and completely righteous will for his own glory. He is completely loving, gracious, merciful, and long-suffering. He overflows with goodness and truth. He forgives wickedness, transgression, and sin, and rewards those who diligently seek him. His judgments are completely just and awesome. He hates all sin and will not acquit the guilty. Please pause for um, silent prayer. Friends, hear the good news. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Don't forget that God has saved us from the kingdom of darkness. He has brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. If the Son sits, sets you free, you will be freed indeed. Because of him, all of our sins have been forgiven. Let all those living Forgiven in Christ, shout, Hosanna. 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 and everybody else what we learned about this, okay? So, Josie, did we learn about any kingdoms? What, how many kingdoms? Two kingdoms, what were they? Good kingdom and a bad kingdom. And, and oh, we talked about how we can know which is the good kingdom. There's a book, what book? The Bible. The Bible, yeah, very good. And um, do you guys remember we talked about God, that, that there's one God and how many persons? Three. What are they? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we just sang about that, didn't we? That was, that was pretty cool when we sang that. All right, and then um, what do we, if, 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 how do we get into to God's kingdom? You remember? There was three words. First one started with an A. Admit that we need him, repent and turn to him. What was the next one? Believe. And then the next one? Forever receive. I'm going to talk about that with the adults so they can understand that as well too. All right, so we're part of God's kingdom. What do we wear in God's kingdom? Whose armor? God's armor. And do you guys remember what it was? The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Oh, I think they got it. I think they got it. All right, I'm glad you guys remembered that. Did you have fun? All right. All right, and the rest of you, hopefully you you know that. Too. You knew the answer, too, didn't you, Claire? You knew the answer. You weren't even there. So we get into God's kingdom by admitting we need him, by turning to him, trusting what he did on the cross, and then we grow every day. We wear his armor. 
And today you'll hear me talk about we worship him in all we say. Yes. All right. Who made you? What else did he make? Everything. And why did he make you and everything else? All right, let's pray. Lord God, thank you. Thank you that you lived for us, you died for us, you rose again. And I pray that we would all admit our need for that. We would believe that and we would forever receive that. And Lord, I just thank you so much that you then cover us in your armor. Help these, these young ones to grow up in the truth and with the salvation and faith and the sword and spirit, which is the word of God and the peace of the gospel, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for uh, everything they've learned. Now let them grow into it and keep with it all their lives in thanksgiving to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, you guys, good to see you. There's snacks. They were paying attention. I'm glad to see this. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 5. And uh, today is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do chapter 5 again next week and go into it a little more in depth like I normally do. Uh, but today we're going to kind of look at it through the lenses of Vacation Bible School and those three words that we just taught the kids, admit, believe, and forever receive. Uh, so before we go to God's word, let's go to him in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the songs that we have sung this morning. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Thank you for the cross. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh Lord, I pray that those wouldn't just be phrases that we sing, in this building on Sunday morning, I pray that they'd be the soundtrack of our life. Lord, I thank you for the kids up here. I thank you that they're here this morning, Lord, that they're, they're singing and they're learning and they're growing. Lord, I thank you for every person that is here today and what a blessing it is to see them. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts. It's your Holy Spirit that revealed this vision to John and, and helped and not helped, but inspired him to write it down, Lord, and that same Holy Spirit can speak to us from that word today. Oh, Lord, speak to our hearts. Help us to see our utter dependence upon you, because you are worthy. I do pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are my rock. You are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation chapter 5. Hear the word of the Lord. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding 
golden bowls of full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. I want to start out today by playing a song. It's one that we've done as a praise team, but I didn't want them to do it. I want them to sit and be able to reflect on the words. It's a choral arrangement. You'll see some words down here that say to uh, order this. That's because it's a promotional video to try and get you to buy the uh, choir cantata. It's beautiful. I ask that the Spirit would speak to you as you watch, and it's turned up kind of loud. You have to have it loud. Go ahead. From the moment Jesus conquered death, the praise that had always surrounded him in heaven suddenly became the song that his followers took up on earth. He alone was holy. He alone could save us. When we needed a lamb to atone for our sins, we alone could do it. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting?
Is he worthy? He is. In the Old Testament, when Isaiah sees into heaven, he says, I am undone. As John gets to see into heaven and sees the holy, holy, holiness of God, he realizes that no human is worthy to open the scroll that is held in the hand, the right hand, of the one on the throne. And he weeps. The Greek word there is kaleo, and it means a deep lament, a wailing, a sorrow. It's the same word that's used at the tomb when Mary can't find Jesus' body. She's weeping. She's sorrowful. It's actually not the same word for the shortest verse, John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. When Jesus wept at the death of Lazarus, that Greek word means silent tears flowing down your cheeks. The word here used in the Revelation by John is kaleo. It's a deep, sorrowful, wailing mourning because no one is worthy. It's a recognition of the creatureliness of the creature and the presence of the Creator. And he says, no one is worthy in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. It's a great weekend for us as a nation. It's the Independence Weekend. And we praise God for the independence of our nation. But spiritually, John helps us to see that we are utterly dependent upon God to provide for us. Because he will find out there is one that is worthy. And the one that is worthy is a lamb that was slain. We're going to look today at the Lamb in Revelation. We're going to look at it through the lenses of Vacation Bible School. And I pray that you will hear the message that our life is dependent upon God. And I pray that it will result in a life song of praise to Jesus in response. May our life be dependent upon God, resulting in a life song of praise to Jesus in response. The lenses that we're going to look at this through today are those three statements from Vacation Bible School. Admit, believe, and forever receive. As the kids told you, Vacation Bible School, we talked about two kingdoms. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of the devil. The good kingdom, the bad kingdom. And we talked to the kids about the, the first step to being part of the good kingdom is to admit that you aren't good. And that is not an easily accepted message in today's world. The message of the secular society around us says, you're born good, you just have some things that change the directory of your life here and there. But that is not at all the message of the scriptures. The scriptures say we are not born good. Romans 3, read that this afternoon. It's an extensive writing on that. And it ends with this summary. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the first part of getting into the kingdom is to admit our need for a Savior. And we have that admission here in Revelation. No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Now, now what is this scroll? If you read a bunch of Bible commentaries, you'll see that Bible scholars have, have all kinds of different ideas of what this scroll actually is. But the best that we can figure out in the best way, which is letting Scripture interpret Scripture, 
and looking at a similar, similar passage in Ezekiel, a scroll is the total plan of judgment and redemption. God's total plan of judgment and redemption, which all centers upon the one who is worthy to open it, Jesus Christ. Now, we don't like this idea. We, we want to say, you know what, I'll, I, don't, I don't want somebody else to save me. I'll do it myself. I'll, I'll just make another sacrifice and another sacrifice and another sacrifice. Hebrews 10 tells us that those sacrifices don't ever really take care of sin. They're just pointing us forward to Jesus who really could take care of sin. Hebrews 10, 3-4. In these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Hebrews 10 goes on to say, though, but Jesus can take care of them. Hebrews 10, 12. When Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies could be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. We need to admit we need a sacrifice to pay for our sins. One of the kids in Vacation Bible School actually came up with the word repent when we talked about this. He says, I think we need to repent. That's what admitting is. It's repenting. It's turning from my own self-sufficiency and my own sin and admitting that I need one to save me. Danielle did such a great job helping out with the kids. She would say for this next one, number two, she would go, Believe! And the kids would all go, believe, right? Remember that? Believe in what? Believe in the sacrifice of the lamb. Verse 6. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne, and when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. What do we believe in? We believe in the sacrifice that is for all who will believe. From every tribe, every language, every people, every nation. I had a cool experience this past week. We took the girls to see their favorite boy band at Star Lake. Big time rush. I was blown away, actually, by the diversity of the people at this concert. There were people older than me. There were little kids. There were, of course, teenage girls. There were teenage guys. There were young adult women, young adult men. There were white. There were black. There were all sizes. There were all shapes. All there to adore the four guys of Big time rush. The fans are called rushers. As cool as that was, this text is telling us that it's better than that. It's better than any gathering at Star Lake. It's a worldwide gathering of people of every size, shape, color, and geographical language for one purpose, to adore the one that gives us purpose, to adore and worship the, la the lamb that was slain, to praise and honor the one that has purchased them, the one that has paid the price for their sin. And that price is his love. And that is what we believe. 
Now remember that the Greek word believe always means yes to acknowledge with your mind, but also to trust with your life. We admit our dependence upon something outside of ourself. It's not something outside of ourself, it's someone outside of ourself. We repent and turn towards and we believe that the lamb was slain. And did you notice that this lamb in the vision, he's not just a dead lamb that was slain, he's a living lamb that was slain. We believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To be part of God's kingdom, you admit your need. You believe. And as you grow and mature, you realize that, that you aren't actually the one doing this. The Holy Spirit's doing it inside you. And he gets all the glory. And the last part is to forever receive. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The forever received is to spend your life in all aspects of it worshiping this worthy lamb. Casting Crowns had a song a few years ago called Life Song. He said, let my life song sing to you. And what they meant by that life song word is the, the soundtrack of your life, so to speak. That you are living your life as an act of worship. Romans 12, 1-2 speaks of it. I love the way that the New Living Translation paraphrases it. Give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. At the end of Bible school, we told the kids that you, you train your brain or you practice reading and knowing the scriptures so that you can use that sword of, of the spirit when you need it in your, your life. Specifically for the vacation Bible school kids, you admit and then you believe and you forever receive by putting on the armor. And that is certainly part of what you do. But from our text today, there's another part. You admit your need, you believe in what he did, and then you forever receive by living all of your life as an act of worship. Seeking to give praise to Jesus. Because to him belong praise, honor, glory, and power forever. Well, so what, Pastor Jefferson? Today's world does not like biblical truth. I read a social media post criticizing the curriculum of our vacation Bible school. And they were particularly criticizing it because it asked the kids to take sides. Our society doesn't like to admit that we are born sinful. Think of any of the big issues of the day. Guns, abortion, crime, decay, drug use. Our society's belief is that, that we are born good. We can legislate our way out of these issues. The biblical truth is we're born in rebellion to God. We're born into the bad kingdom. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us, he's talking to believers, 
all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. The Bible says we're born physically, but spiritually in rebellion against God. The Holy Spirit takes the word and brings our hearts to life. And we hear and we say, oh, I admit, I believe, I receive. Oh, Pastor Jefferson, I'm still not sure you're telling me the truth. Read Romans chapter 3. The spiritual condition that we come into the world with is one of rebellion. So all those issues I mentioned that, that you hear on the news and on the talk shows and everything every day, those are issues of, of the heart. Making laws won't change anything. They won't change the heart. The loving thing to do for kids is to present them with the truth. Yes, there are signs. It's a cosmic battle between good and evil. And no one is worthy to defeat that evil except Jesus. So admit your dependence upon him and turn to him. Believe, trust in his sacrifice and his resurrection to pay for your sins and give you forgiveness and grace and peace and new life. And then forever receive that love by seeking to worship him here in this time, in this place. Yes. But also Monday through Friday and Saturday at work and at school and whatever you're doing. And to grow in him and to wear his own. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave. He was David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. May our life be a dependence upon God, resulting in a life song of praise to Jesus in response. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you have done what we cannot do. We cannot make ourselves right with you. That is the gospel message that you have, have done. Lord, I saw a movie trailer yesterday where it says, good people go to heaven. That's not the gospel message. The gospel message is that people who believe in Jesus Christ go to heaven. And consequently, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you are a good person. Oh Lord, I want everyone here to hear that gospel message. To admit their dependence upon you, their need for a Savior. To turn to you. To trust in what you've done. To realize that as they do that, it's the Holy Spirit giving them the power to do that. And then to live their life a life of worship. If there's anyone here, Lord, that has never had that relationship with you, that's never said, I, I, I follow in you, I need you, pray today is the day of salvation. That they would admit, believe, and forever receive. Lord, I know there are those here today and there are those watching that have understood that they've been on that journey, they've been forever receiving your love and your mercy for years and decades. And Lord, I pray that you would help continue to strengthen, continue to deepen us, continue to understand, to understand our need for the gospel. Thank you. We love you, we praise you, we need you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We respond to God's word in a number of different ways. On the first Sunday of the month, we have the opportunity to come to his table. And this table is not the table of the Hanover Presbyterian Church. 
It's not even the table of our parent denomination, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. It is the Lord's table. And he invites those who will come to come in faith and repentance and in love. You've heard me say it, but maybe someone wasn't here that day, or maybe their mind had wandered, so I'll say it again. He's given us this as a sensible sign. And what I mean by that is we can touch the bread. We can smell the bread. We can taste the bread. If I were to pour the juice into the cup, I could hear it. He has given us this because he loves us. And he knows we're creatures. And he knows this is something we can understand. He's giving us this to represent the reality of union with him. It is indeed like that, that Kennywood arrow that I always talk about. When you go across the bridge and you, you see that arrow, that's not the reality of Kennywood. It's pointing you to the reality of Kennywood. This is a sensible sign pointing us to the reality of a communion that our minds can't understand with the Lord Jesus Christ can't understand full with the Lord Jesus Christ. So come to this table. The scriptures do say to examine your heart. If you have unconfessed sin, confess it before the Lord. And come and receive forgiveness, grace, and mercy. And parents, if your kids understand that, then they're welcome to partake. But if they think it's just sort of a snack in the middle of the service, have them wait until they understand what this is all about. Come to this table. Come to this table in faith, repentance, and love. Let's pray. Lord, you tell us that you are the bread of life. Whoever believes will not be hungry. Whoever comes to you will not be thirsty. Blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Oh Lord, thank you that you give us these sensible signs that speak to this union with you that's beyond our, our human comprehension. We know that, Lord, as we come to this table, we're one with you. We're one with each other. We're one with brothers and sisters literally around the globe. And in some way, we're one with those who have gone before us in the faith, who are in the great cloud of witnesses. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We don't come to this table because we are worthy. None of us are worthy. We come to this table because you are worthy. And we honor you. And we are amazed that you call us to commune with you. Thank you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm going to invite the elders that are serving to come forward. When you receive the bread, hold on to it, because then you will receive the cup. Hold on to that. We will take everything together.
arrested, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this cup is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Let's stand and sing. something of praise or a concern that you want to lift up before the body, I will leave a time for you to do that directly in the prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> what a great song, Lord. We stand only in Christ. Only because you are Lord. And as we stand in Christ, in your righteousness, in your salvation, in your truth, we realize that you love us deeply. And you tell us to cast our cares, our anxieties upon you. Lord, we mentioned a lot of them in Sunday school. Everyone in here has something they're going through in different ways, Lord. And we cry out for your help, for your peace, for your mercy. And I ask you to hear directly from any of your people who want to pray out loud to you. 
Let's take travels for Scott and Matt and their families and great um, visit with, our, with them and our grandchildren. Dear God, for Isaac and his family, be with him and hold him in your hands and be with his family and comfort them now at this time. And we are asking for healing for Isaac. He has come quite a far journey so far, and we are continuing to pray for him. So travels for Stephen and Missy, my nephew and his family, as they travel home today from vacation. Lord Robin and I would like to lift up everyone in our church family and our friends around the world who have shared their love and their encouragement and their prayers uh, with you and us. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. Lord, we've been praying for Christian the last few weeks, and we heard the great news this morning that he is home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for hearing our prayers. We lift everything up to you. We, we've mentioned them out loud in Sunday school and, and in our hearts, Lord, so you know what they are. We lift them up to you. Lift up to you our nation. Lift up to our leaders. Pray that you would provide leaders, Lord, that have wisdom. And wisdom begins with fear of the Lord. So turn the hearts of our leaders at every level to you, Lord. Be with those who serve our country. We celebrate during this 4th of July coming up holiday, Lord. We celebrate and we thank you for this incredible place where we live. We thank you for all those who've gone before us, and we ask for your mercy and grace on those who serve this country now. We ask for your mercy and grace on us. And you would rise up the next generation to take the truths they learned in vacation Bible school and live them out for your glory. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care about our individual lives. And now would you hear us as we come together praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power the glory of God. Over the past few weeks, you have heard me giving you updates from our, our son, Zachariah, as he was at camp, and today you'll see that he's here. Um, you can talk to him about that if you want. I asked him if he wanted to say something. He said, have me do it. It was one of those learning experiences. It was not that the work was too hard. He could do the work. It was that it was uh, not the right fit. Not the right fit to be nine hours away from home in a place uh, where he didn't know many people. And uh, I'm thankful that the, the Wilds camp was understanding of that. Everyone was helpful with, with that. And just thank you for your prayers for him. And now as we figure out where the Lord has him for the rest of the summer, I appreciate prayers for that as well. So thank you. We respond to God's word by giving. Giving of our time, giving of our abilities, and giving of the resources he's given us in the first place. So I invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given. <laughs>
Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts that have been given. We pray that you would provide for every need of your people. We pray that the message of the love of Christ may go out throughout Western Pennsylvania and throughout your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you real quickly to look at your handover happenings on the back of your bulletin. Certainly a big thank you to those that helped with Vacation Bible School. And you may be wondering, uh, this year you, you never saw a list of snacks. The way that uh, Mill Creek wanted us to do that is they said, it'd be easier if you just send us some money and, and we'll have our people go get it. So that's what we did this year. Um, so we, we are thankful to everybody that was, was part of that in any way, shape, or form. This is the first week of July, so the first Thursday, we're having community prayer night. That is at 7 o'clock. Uh, Lord willing, we'll sit outside and pray, If uh, so bring a lawn chair, if not, we'll pray inside, but come, come and pray. We, uh, you heard the testimony during our prayer time of what a what valuable thing that is. Um, coming up, you will see that our picnic at the uh, Harshberger Mobile Home uh, Park is scheduled for Monday, July 24th. There is a sign up out there for if you would like to provide the hot dogs. You don't have to cook them. Dawn's willing to do that. But if you would like to provide the hot dogs or the buns or the hamburger, whatever, there's a, a list out there to please sign on. Um, the baby bottles, we would like to get back to choices this week. So if you all of a sudden, oh, I forgot that, it's at home, try and get it in here tomorrow if you can or bring them to me if you need to. Um, but we want to get those back to uh, choices this week so that they can use that for their ministry. The summer fellowship, the second summer fellowship, is next Sunday. Aaron, you want to say anything about it? No, if you could let um, me or if you could know that you're going to come, um, hopefully it will be done right by then. Um, and we can play outside. If not, tabletop games, um, probably going to have some full court. So bring it aside. Um, and there's a sign up there, or let me know if that would be helpful just for planning purposes. Thanks, everyone. If you missed the first one in June, we had a blast. So uh, come and it's, it's nothing better than just being together to enjoy being together in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's some other announcements there you'll see. Anything else that I'm forgetting that is not on there? Tom? Yeah, out in the narthex, there's a coat, um, a black vest, and a lady's coat, the short lady's coat. It's been there for almost two years now. Does anybody know who it might belong to? If not, um, we have volunteers who are willing to take them. But we're going to hang in there for a week or so and, and wait. But they've been here for two years, and you guys want to take them. Thank you for remembering that. And that, that reminds me also that there was a group of guys in here this week. If you didn't happen to come in uh, through the fellowship hall, go look at the, the preschool area. It's got a brand new floor, and it looks beautiful. So thank you to the, the group of guys that uh, did that this past week. A closing hymn is the same one as last week, but it encompasses chapter 4 and chapter 5 of, of Revelation. Let's stand and sing holy. <laughs>
our worship together has ended, but now we leave this building and we worship him and give him glory in everything we do. May our, our life song be a response to the only one that is worthy to save us and make us whole. And now I see the benediction. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace.